Wow, well, guys, just have a look at this. And more from this side. And another one. Oh, yields from this side, guys. Just have a look. So guys, today I want to show you how to grow the healthiest tomatoes in your garden for commercial use or for home use. So welcome to this beautiful farm here. It's well, well organized. As you can see from down, the yield is just giving. Just have a look. More tomatoes. So the entire land that you're seeing here where the tomatoes are grown is a quarter an acre. And every tomato that you're seeing here, it has yielded almost the same, just like I've shown you there, the same tomatoes. So we are going to learn on how to plant or how to grow tomatoes that can help you to yield more. So this is how the entire land looks like. So if you're new here guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Lynet underscore KE and welcome to the life in the countryside. So today we are going to learn on how to grow good tomatoes and how to yield more. The tomato variety that you're seeing here is called Anzo. So Anzo looks like this guys. Yeah. So let's say you're planting today your tomato or you're sowing the seeds. So this is how it happens. When you're sowing the seeds from the zero day to the 90th day, you're supposed to be harvesting what? A tomato. You're supposed to be having a tomato just like this. In most cases, farmers prefer to buy seedlings from the sellers to come and plant here. Just like this farmer, he just bought the seedlings from the, uh, from the shop and then came and planted. So today is the 75th day since he planted these tomatoes. First, there are so many things which are happening currently here on the farm so let me show you what's going on guys we are going to share the knowledge with you guys and today we are going to learn so welcome to the farm and this is the farmer here hi hi <laughs> How are you? Fine, fine. Kopoa? Yeah, Kopoa. Ah. Ah. yeah, so this is the farmer. This is the owner of this garden. Yeah, I want to congratulate you for being a good farmer. Ah. And your tomatoes are really doing well. Thanks. Yes. Ah. So, I know people might want to ask so many questions about the tomatoes yeah. and how good they are looking. Yeah. So, maybe right now, what are you doing? Um, Na... Adding in the fertilizer. Oh, you're adding the fertilizer? Yeah, uh, manure. Oh, the manure. Mm. So, what's the name of this fertilizer? Like 23, 23. 23, 23. Yeah, so right now they are so, like sowing the fertilizers. So somebody might be wondering why are they throwing the fertilizer and the weeds are all over. So there are some people there. We are going to show you how it's working. When they will uproot like this, the way I'm doing this, the fertilizer will be going down. And that's how the, uh, the tomatoes will be able to suck the fertilizer to the tree. Let's go and see how they are doing it practically. Yeah, actually they are here. As you can see, you know tomatoes, you have to walk like this, like this, so that you don't hit the tomatoes. So this is how they are doing from here. Muriaga. Yeah, so this is how they are doing. Already, the fertilizer, no, and then I took chimba. Yeah, the fertilizer is here. As you can see now, they are doing the weeding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you see like how they're doing the weeding, that means that they're just pulling out the weeds and then leave the fertilizer on the ground. And also they're trying to, uh, to direct the fertilizer to the plant. So, yeah, just like that. as i told you guys in my previous videos i told you that women here in the village they are the best who does weeding and you can just attest from this side i okay i didn't call them i just found them they are all over here they are the best when it comes for weeding here you can see these trees all the sticks which are being put here so actually this works as an anchor over tomato that's why like it can be tied here so these ones the men does the thing like do putting down like installing the sticks and then tying these small ropes here it's the women who does it so that means that tells you or oh, this means that the women are so careful because when you're tying this thing you're dealing with a single branch or a single leaf 
So women are very cautious when it comes to taking care of things. So that's why they prefer women to do the weeding and women to do the tying of the rope and the tomato. For demonstration, this is how they do it. So this is the owner of the farm, gives them the ropes here, you can see them. And then they are going to tie the ropes on these sticks. Yeah, so let's see how they are doing it. And the purpose of tying the uh, the tomatoes or the leaves is uh, when the tomatoes produces the tomato plant or the tomato fruit, just like this one, it's, it's not supposed to be touching down the ground because when it touches the soil, it collects a lot of diseases, pest from the soil. So it's very important when your tomatoes use hanged up, like they are being uh, tied up. So just like that. So you can opt to tie the stem. The stem means this one here. Also, you can opt to tie the leaf. So it depends where the tomato has yielded from. For example, this one you see here, it has already started yielding. So they tied the stem. I think I can do it as well. So let me try. <laughs> yeah. So let's say, for example, this one here. Ikopua. <laughs> Yeah, just like that and then I'll pull this one come and give it a support on this branch done <laughs> move to another plant let's see which one needs my help maybe here yeah let me try this one this one see ya pa So the reason as to why they use these tiny rods here is because they don't want to hurt the branch or like to interfere with the branch. So you just try it like this. So guys, since we are on the farm, we want to ask the people, the experienced people, what's the secret to grow big tomatoes like this one? Secret in Akwanga gani? Akwanga? Yeah. Kuweka fataraisa inato, enya inatosa eh. na siri ya piri uh -huh. ni kupiga ndawa uh -huh. ili inatakiwa ipiwe. Eh, so the first secret is to put the fertilizer which is very enough. So I asked him previously, he told me that what he starts with is manure. Mm. Kau manure ama manua, goat. Eh? Goat manure ama kau manure. Kau manure. Kau manure. So... Mbeta. Uh, cow manure is the better because I know with cow dung it decomposes faster compared to the uh, goat manure. So they start first by doing the furrows and then they come and put the, uh, the cow manure which is the cow dung which has already decomposed and then later they fix with the fertilizer. fertilizer. So they come up with the fertilizer. Which type of fertilizer? Yeah, uh, DAP. DAP. Uh. So it's DAP something. DAP is the starter. Yeah. Oh, DAP is the starter. Yeah. yeah. So you mix the DAP, and then when they are planting, they do furrows. So you can show them how the furrows are. So for example, where that woman is doing the weeding, this is a, a raised bed, just like a raised bed. Yeah. And the furrow is here. Another raised bed here. So I'm actually lucky. Like I've just passed by the place that they just planted yesterday. So this whole land here, as you can see it, it was planted yesterday. So this is how they plant it. You see this one? Yeah, it's very small, but looks very, very, very healthy. So let me show you how they give them water. So here, as you can see, they've planted in a way that there are furrows, but they always plant here, not inside the furrow. Yeah, I think it's quite clear, right? And you remember you were told the land has to be level. You see like yeah. these furrows are level. Yeah, in that, mm -hmm. this tomato here gets enough water as that one, as that one which is mm -hmm. at the far end. So let me show you where they are watering. Mm -hmm. I think that will be better. And I can see already someone is having a 
Bobo. Napsack prayer. Napsack prayer. We call it the bombo. Eh, bombo. Call that in our language. Yeah. You can see how he watering. Hmm. Yeah, Jay. Oh, so this is how he's watering using this big pipe here. So they are. Oh, wow. Oh, Isha Tosha. Okay, let me stand this. Way. Yeah. So I think they are using a paper, maybe to direct. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. To direct and to make it flow in softly. Oh, softly, yes. without a lot of mini uh -huh. pressure. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Wow, that's good. So you can see it's already full, just the same as this one. So he's going to make, oh, he connects here. So the reason as to why he's using this, I think it's because the smoothness of the flow of water, water not to destroy the furrows, yes. and also the soil which is just, just like yeah. the heap. The yeah. Now you can see the tomatoes are not covered with, they make sure like the tip is not covered by water. Mm. And do you know the machine that, oh, okay. <laughs> And you know the machine that's pumping water is very big. And my brother, go back to the canister. Ah, yeah, the small one. The small one. Eh? Oh. oh, I think it's not far. It's just here, yeah. still It's not far. Yeah. Oh, from this river that's just like a hundred meters from here. Yeah. yeah. Yes, a mm. hundred meters. Yes. Wow. wow. This is nice. So there is a partition here. Okay, just remove. Thought. Yes, yeah. like that. And then he fixes that. To yeah, give it right. here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, cool. <laughs> it's a good chemistry. Yes. At least if you don't have a net, mm. just use that. Oh, there is a net which is being used. Like that's an impro uh, like to make sure the water comes out smoothly. Smoothly. <coughs> you see the furrows are very tiny. Yeah. So this is how they've planted all and actually it was planted yesterday. I'm really loving like I'm learning a new thing each and every day. Yes. Wow, look. They are two days old, they will be sprayed a uh, fungicide which helps in stem, stem rot. rot. So immediately after planting the tomatoes, they are one week old. So you come with another pesticide to come and spray. So this first pesticide is to avoid the cartoons from eating the tomatoes, like the cartoon from cutting down the tomato plants because they are very, uh, they are very soft and that's how the cartoons like, like cutting them from the roots. Another thing, after the first pesticide, another second pesticide that they usually apply is uh, to prevent cold. So the most common uh, herbicide or pesticide that they use to control the cold effect on the, on the tomatoes is called Victor. Actually, just come along with me so that I show you the, the medicine that I use. It's actually here. Ah. So you can see Victory. This uh, pesticide, which is called Victory 72 WP, is a protective fungicide for the control of downy mildew on roses and early and late blight on tomatoes and uh, potatoes. Wow. And also, we have some instruction. Okay, it's actually translated to Kiswahili because this is Kenya. Guys, the biggest tip for growing tomatoes, all for having more yield just like this maybe, is to spray. That's all I'm learning today. So, tying the tomatoes like this is an endless process because they keep on growing and flowering each and every time. Like this one here already been tied here. So this one needs also to be tied maybe here and it will continue grow. It will continue producing more branches as it goes up so number two is fertilizer you have to add fertilizer and the fertilizer they are in different types there is one for growing up there is another one for making the tomatoes to grow big and there is another one for making them flourish so you have to know all the types of the fertilizer so that you can apply according to the best time let's say today you're starting harvesting the tomatoes yes. how long is going to take you harvesting until they are depleted flower how many days 
siku ya kwanza eh. unaweza chuna mwezi mmoja na nusu mwezi mmoja na nusu eh. mm -hmm. mm. oh, so that means that it's like uh, 30 plus 15 day, 45 days of harvesting okay. tomatoes yes oh mm. oh that's great then you'll be a song and how many days in a week How many by the way how many days in a week or every two days, day two days two days in a week yeah. let's say monday, monday and, and thursday monday and thursday monday and thursday yes. that's when you harvest yeah. the tomatoes in kenya the tomatoes are being sold in boxes so we call them sanduku here so there is a big sanduku and a small sanduku there is one that he said is 60 sindio uh, 60 kg 60 kg and another one is a 100 kg 100 kg mm. so let's say today you're going to sell on a 60 kg how yeah. much will you sell today 4000 4000 Kenyan shillings yeah, Kenya shillings How much is that chalo in uh, dollars 35 dollars 35 dollars oh, and 100 kg 7500 7500 7500 7500 Kenyan shillings equivalent to how many dollars chalo about 63 dollars about 63 dollars mm -hmm. oh that's great mm -hmm. so for example this is a season where mm -hmm. there are no tomatoes like the tomatoes prices are high munaweza uza mpaka ngapi how much the highest it has highest. ever gone price yeah like this time eh yeah. 10000 10000 60 kg uh, 100 kg or oh, 100 kg yes. 10000 yeah. uh -huh. 60 kg yeah. 6000 6000 yes. oh that's great mm. yeah so let's say for example there is a season where everybody like all the farmers planted and the tomatoes ziko mingi yeah. they are many yeah. the least that you have ever sold is yeah. the least okay ile kidogo shai uza ni ngapi 1200 hiyo ya 60 kg so 1200 is 2000 kenyan shillings the biggest challenge when you're planting tomatoes ni gani when you are planting uh, when you're growing tomatoes what's the biggest challenge ni challenge gani ndio kubwa kabisa ukipanda nyanya ile ina challenge eh kunaweza kuwa wakati wa wakiangazi challenge kumba ina kuanga ni manji Eh, unaweza kosa manji mahali mepandia mm. nyanya mm. Eh. Mm. So ama he, ama mm. unaweza enda mm. kupanda kuna masamba mengine mm. iko pua kabisa oh. na unaweza enda kupanda nyanya yeah. bila kuweka manyua mm. eh. kosa hata kuona hata kitu <laughs> oh. eh. so, ikatae kukomaa uh -huh. iwe haikomai inafika katikati na eh. nyauka mm. oh mm. wow so actually he's saying that the biggest challenge is water compared to where you've planted your tomatoes you have to so the first thing to consider when you're planting uh, tomatoes you have to consider water let's say a river where you can get water from mm. to give you the uh like when you're okay when you're watering your tomatoes so that means that tomatoes they really love water so another challenge i'm saying i'm saying Yeah, okay you get a land where it's not okay it's not fertile yes. yeah some of the lands here Uh, you find that they are not fertile but one thing i've learned is uh, mm. most farms which are, are unfertile mm. they are the ones which are being applied fertilizer that's what i'm learning is it true yeah, yes true ukiongeza fertilizer mingi na unfertile land ama ina okay wana semanga uki unfertile unfertile land ni juu watu wameka mambolea mingi na madawa mingi ni ukweli mchanga iko na chumvi mingi Oh Unafa, so eh, ndio sasa unaweza una, una uweka manyua. Uh, eh. Oh yeah. So actually what he's saying is uh, so some of the unfertile land is because of the more fertilizer which is which is being uh, like applied so it makes the soil to become acidic or mm. yeah acidic. acidic. Yeah so you need to neutralize the the acidity with the manure, manure. which is cowd. Yes. 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 So one thing he has told me because when we go to the far end the tomatoes are the same to the farther end and the tomato okay right center left right center they're just okay like they are the same. You can even see the height. They are all all of them are of this height. Maybe in the next few days they will be here. Maybe my height. So this is the secret to that of having same a uh, yielded tomatoes or same harvest from one tomato or from different tomatoes is to levelize the ground when you're giving water make sure every tomato is receiving the same amount of water which is being applied on the ground so levelizing before you plant is very important if i want to plant for example i want an acre mm. yeah so how much do i need to plant an acre 
ya kukusa nyanya eh. kuanza hadi kukoma eh kuanza hadi kukoma <laughs> unafaa uwe eh. na 1350 na kali moja 350000 Kenyan shillings wow that's much how many dollars chalo eh? you said <laughs> 350000 oh, Wow, that's Kenyan around shillings. that's around 3000 dollars Of one worker. Mm -mm. <laughs> of this ground, like how much is the seedling this pot? We, oh, this. Your kitu, yes. Tree. Oh, tree. 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 Yeah. tree monja, mm. inatoka elfu mbili. Oh, 2,000. Yeah. And it holds how many tomatoes seedling? In a hold tomato ngapi? Yo, tree. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, tree Kona mia ine. Oh, 400 yeah. seedlings. seedlings. And is it, okay, is it like, iko, okay, how can I say it? Like, ni zote zina meanga? So the probability is all of them are going to grow. To grow. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Compared to how you're going maybe to raise a seed bed, a nursery, mm. to plant the seeds. So it's better you just go and buy them. And buy and, and come and plant. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm going to eat the tomatoes, the first one, before even the farmer eats his. <laughs> anyway, so I was asking, according to how you've planted these tomatoes, you've yeah. told me it's a quarter an acre. Yeah. And the money that you've used is around 78,000 Kenyan shillings. Yes. So let's say you want to return that 78,000. thousand Kenyan shillings mm. how many harvests do you think that you're going to harvest let's say how many harvest in Amanisha siku mara ngapi utachuna ndio urudishe hiyo pesa to return the money that you've spent ni kama mara sita mara sita to get the 78,000 78, so that means it's like three weeks three weeks and you've said that you're going to harvest for a month and a half yeah. so from three weeks The other ones are just the profit. The profit. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, so to recover the amount that he has used, he only needs three weeks. good weeks. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. No. Yes. Let me tell you something. I yeah. was trying to do some maths. Uh -huh. Sorry guys, I know you're wondering who is talking behind the camera. So, Let me introduce myself. Yeah. Okay, so he has said right now he has spent around 78,000, eh? Yeah. And a quarter Like an acre. A, an, an acre has four quarters, isn't yes. oh, Has four quarters. Yes. Oh yeah. Like yeah. this this portion here, mm. like you need four portions like this yeah. to make an acre. Yeah. He said you're going to spend around three hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Yes. Do you know it's true? Uh -huh. So right now here he has spent seventy eight thousand, and it's not yet harvesting time. Okay, yes. he's gonna harvest. Mm. So it comes three hundred and twelve. 300 just like the, the same way same the same way he said estimate that he gave us <laughs> like 350,000 can can help you to uh, to grow tomatoes a whole acre, a whole acre. Uh, and this yeah. is just a quarter an acre mm. so let's say you need four of this yes quarters right? yes, yes. Yeah. and that oh. one is going to cost you 312 <laughs> But you know, it's mm -hmm. really 12, but you know they are miscellaneous. Yeah, there are so much miscellaneous. Let's say, for example, traveling from where you're living to this place, mm -hmm. that's a miscellaneous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that. <laughs> most of the time he does he, the work. He works most of the time. So yeah. he's really saving a lot. So yeah. you already know like. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Imagine 78,000. Mm. He's been working by himself. By himself. Yes. Like right now he's putting the, the fertilizer. The fertilizer. Yeah. Now. <laughs> tall, maybe you hired me. How, how much could you have paid me? If you Come on, the putting the fertilizer. Four hundred. Four hundred. Imagine. Yes. <laughs> See, I can do the half. Yes. How much are you I do the half. I'll be paid two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> the fertilizer is done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. So here, actually, we found some other farmers who are harvesting tomatoes, and they are actually harvesting from this side. So the other part that we were, it's just a few meters to there. So. I found women. I told you here women work. They are the ones who work there. So these are the tomatoes that they are collecting. Yeah, so you can see how big the harvest is. I think this is a different species compared to the one that we were at the garden. Yeah, you can see. 
seems to be a different species, right, Chalo? Yes. Yeah. And you see, they always harvest when they are green. Green. You know, these yeah. ones are going to ripen very fast. Maybe in the next two, three days, they'll be ripe. Wow. Yeah, because they some of them might be transported to long distances. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so maybe over 400 riping. kilometers, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. Are the kind of trees that they use to support the tomatoes, like to put down. So, like, this farmer here is very ready to put when he grows the tomato. Hey, Lynette, I know you're happy you've seen a place where they are harvesting. Yeah, at least now these are the sanduku. Oh, the sanduku. Yeah, the boxes where they put the tomatoes. Mm. Imoja ni akilongapi? Eh. Yeah. Sixty yeah. kilos. Yeah, so this is the, for the sixty kgs, and yes. as you can see, they are actually sorting, grading, like according grading. to the size. Yeah, sorting or grading according to so. the because this one seems to be very big. Yeah. yeah. Which one is the biggest? Oh, oh that one there. That is the biggest of them all, and then followed by. Evo. Oh, like this that. Lynette, yeah. go and show them. <laughs> yeah, slowly, slowly. Yeah. So this is the biggest you can even see yeah and seems like this potato farming here is like tomato gold farming, yes. Toma yeah, yeah tomato farming yeah followed by this wow. one actually the sizes are very different mm -hmm. you can even tell with the look of the eyes yes. yeah wow and the funny thing <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't know i think i think they have mastered the art of grading yeah. you can imagine just by touching they can you can they even know. see the size with your eyes they know like this is supposed to be going there yeah this way and the last one is there the smallest right yeah this is the smallest <laughs> they look like plums all mm. the size of plums yeah these are the smallest mm. you know all of them can't be big yes but at least if you have a bigger one and now this is the small smaller smallest and the smallest yeah and that's how they go even by pricing right and no and then when they finish up mm -hmm. they cover them with this carton here oh the boxes yes the cartons oh. so like you know they can be Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they don't get damaged. Okay. Yeah, because of the distance. Uh, and also, uh -huh. these, okay, so this is where they wash their hands. <laughs> maybe you have a Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe this is the one that supplies water maybe to their farms? Yes. Oh. And I think we saw this river somewhere when we were going there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's how we are going to end our video. And thank you so much for watching. So, this is our improvised bag. This is how we. <laughs> We've collected, <laughs> so at least we have a test we are going to eat from home, right? Yes. Yeah, so let's say thank you so much for, for watching. watching. I hope you learned something, guys. For real. Yeah, I've also learned a lot. Yeah, even me here, I'm learning a lot. Actually, this is not the only farmer who has planted here. There are more from this side. The other side, like we've even been this passing. One. Even this yeah, there is here. this side here. Yeah. Yeah, they've planted a lot of tomatoes. So I hope you learned something and let me know what you think about this video. And maybe, okay, let me see, let me know what do you think about farming in Africa or farming in Kenya, like growing tomatoes in Kenya. So thank you so much for watching. This is Chalo, Chalo Kush. Kush. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Go subscribe to Chalo and show him some love as well. So let's say bye-bye from this side. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you on the next video.